we have always strived to provide a, an efficient and productive workforce. And although we value agency staff, they're not as valuable as our own staff. They may not know the policies and standards in the hospital. Uh, they may not even know their way around. Um, so getting our own staff and getting them properly trained um, and productive uh, was the most important thing. Second reason was uh, financial. We were spending something in the order of three million pounds a month on agency staff. Uh, we have now cut that to a fraction. In terms of our ability to manage and change our spend, agency and temporary staffing was the number one priority. The challenges, I think, were changing the mindset. So working to a future which had no agency staff at all. And quite a few people were saying that's completely unreasonable. That's never going to happen. There was just a sharp intake of breath from everybody. Nobody, the immediate reaction was nobody thought that it was possible. The whole hospital was going to grind to a halt if we don't have any agency. The first things that I started to hear when I, when I came into theatres was, we've tried to do this before, and it was almost a feeling that mm. the agency staff were indispensable and that we wouldn't get people to, to replace them. But actually, that hasn't been the case. Our division, which is women's health, were approaching year end and we had a large financial deficit and an area that we needed to reduce spend on was bank and agency pay for midwifery. So we put some strategies in place and were able to eliminate agency use from May of last year. We introduced a very gradual system of getting the shifts out in advance, starting with the sickness and absence project. We did a huge piece of commitment work with staff and half the sick leave on the unit. The other piece of work we did was to work really robustly with our Pulse Bank nurse bank provider um, and we've been agency free since the 1st of June. It's changing the culture into something that just is now the norm in terms of actually we don't want to use agency. If there is a need to use a temporary member of staff, let's go to the bank. The first challenge has been to build the bank, in, in particular in areas where there have been key staff shortages, theatre staff, A&E nursing, critical care nursing. We recruited more than a thousand people to our bank and we expanded it to include all staff groups. That for me was the main concern uh, that we wanted to address. I think the other issue is certainly around the quality of patient care, you know, if you're introducing people who aren't familiar to the wards and departments, will patient care suffer? We spend time working with Pulse Bank to look to see that they're applying the same rigorous standards that the Trust applies. For me, one of the biggest um, highlights was when we, for the first time, achieved over 95% bank fill rate the first week that we did that. And we had an awful lot of contact with the bank staff in the early, um, sort of the early phases of the project. They would come to the ward and run recruitment workshops so that the ward staff were able to, to sign up with them there and then. I mean, I think the bank team even took the steps of talking to people on a one-to-one -one and saying, well, actually, mm. you know, we value you, we want you to work in the trust, but we won't be able to support you yeah, in the trust as an agent. drop-in sessions at lunchtime mm. and tea breaks. Staff could join up and we let them have a bit longer for break. They filled all the forms in there and then, and also they fast-tracked it because they were already here. Yeah. So a lot of the process you normally have to do, we didn't have to do, so it made it a lot easier for them. The bank have been very good at now looking at local induction, for example, and making that a key priority. Um, and that's been key for managers, and I think that's been one of the reasons why the bank have been successful. We're constantly looking at our own recruitment of permanent staff, our management of our sickness. We've recently done a review of our rota system and flexible working as well. Um, and it's just really about how all of those things impact on our initiative to reduce the agency. The difference in operational terms that, that uh, staff follow um, is that uh, they think ahead so that they can plan for when they're going to need temporary staff. We encourage the nurses to get their off duties and their rotors planned a couple of months ahead and they put all of their available shifts out onto the Pulse Bank system which meant that Pulse had a couple of months to actually fill them and that was a huge driver in eradicating agency. The Trust Bank team would make us aware of how many non-substantive staff were coming through the system and how many substantive nurses were using the new um, self-booking system. So it's all really important information that I could feed back to the team and they could see the results um, that they were helping to achieve. It was kind of known on the ground floor that you have to put extra support into any agency nurse that came in. The staff always felt 
slightly resentful to the fact that they are getting paid more and they would probably get the easiest patient on the unit because you didn't trust them fully to look after a really unwell patient. Patients would always say to the staff member, are you coming back tomorrow? And quite often the agency nurse will say, no, I'm only here for one day. And you can see the disappointment in the patient's face. So I think it's, it benefits our patients from having regular workers and our own employees. I've got midwives coming to work on bank shifts who know the area, who know the team, know our protocols and guidelines, know who to escalate to if there are any risk problems or issues. Staff aren't spending the first half an hour, an hour of their shift actually orientating new staff. We've massively reduced our pressure ulcer prevalence, our complaints have gone down, the staff satisfaction has improved and the patient satisfaction has improved as well. One of the key challenges has been about communicating with just over 7,000 staff. So as we've gone along, we've used things like our staff intranet, the staff newsletter, and we found champions in the organisation who help us to spread that message. I think the first thing to do is to set it as a high-level priority. So it has to go to the top of the pile in terms of things that have to be done by middle management. And you have to have a really good performance management system. So you have to know whether the changes are working or not and whether you're getting the benefits, both in terms of efficiency uh, and in terms of improved financial performance. So it's really a question about getting the whole recruitment process uh, up to speed and getting staff to realise that dependence on agency staff is not a very good way forward for the future. In order to increase your bank staff and to reduce agency staff, you need to hire more people. And to do that, you need recruiters and you need to invest in the team. And, uh, and if you don't, it, it, uh, it doesn't happen. And I think if any trust could learn from that, it's put a bit of investment in to get the savings out. Keep going, keep your recruitment drives going and keep working very much hand in hand with the ward sisters so they're constantly supported to introduce a change. We all truly believe we the saw positive, the value of it. Yeah, yeah. Then I think that made a big, big difference. difference.